Hey everybody, welcome back. Thanks for joining me for another Royal News video. Please remember, if you haven't already subscribed, if you like the content, please remember to hit the subscribe button. It's completely free. You do not get charged a penny. You can subscribe to as many YouTubers as you like. Please hit the like button and hit the notification bell. And as we know, it might occasionally tell you when I've posted a video. So as promised, this video is going to be about a certain award controversy that is going on. But before I sour all of your palettes. Let's talk about someone that was very deserving of an accolade that he has just received. Tony Hudgel and Lila O'Donovan, two very special children, had missed out on the Buckingham Palace garden party that was earlier on. That was held last month. Lila had unfortunately been in hospital and Tony had got stuck for hours in horrific motorway traffic. The palace at the time had said, leave it with us, we will fix this, we will do something about it. But what they actually did exceeded my expectations. Queen Camilla held a private garden party, a tea party for both children in her London residence. The children were treated to a carriage ride, their very own military band, and they had tea with the Queen. How wonderful and sweet of Queen Camilla to do such a wonderful thing. That's making some serious core memories for both of these children. And not only that, Queen Camilla had made it very clear that she wanted to be the person to give Tony a very, very special medal. Tony is the youngest person in British history to be given the British Empire Medal, the BEM, and it has been awarded to him for his services to the prevention of child abuse. Tony, as a child, by his birth, oh, I can't say the word parents, but I have to, uh, he was beaten so badly, he ended up having both his legs amputated. His story started out so truly horrific, but thankfully not long after, he was adopted by his mum and dad, the Hudgels, who love him and have supported him through his journeys, his rehabilitation, learning to walk. And he is now such an incredibly loved and special little boy but it's his fundraising which truly puts this young man on the map of being someone so young but so inspirational. He was inspired by Captain Tom when he did his charity walk and Tony decided he was going to do his very own 10k charity walk and he only wanted to raise £509 because his mother did a typo on the fundraiser for a local children's hospital that he'd attended. Well, Tony captured the nation's hearts and he raised 1.3 million for the children's hospital. Tony is still undertaking charity fundraisers. You can read about Tony's story and donate to his latest challenge at Tony Hudgels Foundation. He truly is an incredible young boy with the heart of a lion. I couldn't think of anyone more deserving. Which then, sadly, brings me over to someone that is very undeserving of the latest accolade that he is due to be collecting, I believe, as soon as next week. Yes, another few months have gone by, so of course, Harry or Meghan are definitely due to pick up another award because this is what they do. Members of the royal family give awards and honours Honours to people to honour the work that they've done for service for community. Harry and Meghan collect awards to honour themselves. Needless to say, this particular award has had an immense amount of backlash. At the time of filming this, there is a change.org petition that so far at the time of filming this video, they had over 50,000 signatures stating they wish ESPN to reconsider giving Prince Harry the pat Tillman Award. But as of last night, there is now a flag on the petition stating, we have received flags from users that the facts in this petition may be contested. No doubt Harry's PR team and most definitely Harry and Meghan's fan base are trying to close the petition down because there's so many signatures. ESPN said that the award was being handed to Harry in recognition of courage, perseverance and service, according to their tweet. Yes, this is the very same Prince Harry. I think maybe they've got a different version of him that we're not quite aware of. But where the outrage is coming from is because of what the award was originally set up for in 2014. It is meant to go towards the unsung heroes, people that do incredible work behind the scenes that never really get their names mentioned. 
The award is named after a real hero, Pat Tillman, who gave up his 3.6 million Arizona Cardinals contract to become an army ranger after the 9-11 attacks. He was sadly killed in Afghanistan in 2004. More upsettingly, it was because of friendly fire, which his mother, Mary Tillman, has campaigned for years to uncover the truth as to how it could have happened after apparently the army had tried to cover it up. Mary Tillman herself has spoken out about her son's namesake award being given to someone as divisive as Prince Harry, and she does not agree with it. There are individuals working in the veteran community that are doing tremendous things to assist veterans. These individuals do not have the money, resources, connections or privileges that Prince Harry has. And thousands of people agree. But one thing that Harry has got is friends in high places and he's also got a large sum of money that he and Meghan can make donations to and then miraculously these organisations then nominate them for the awards. I'm in no doubt that somewhere there has been some sort of a transaction going to perhaps the Tillman Foundation. This is what Harry and Meghan do. They get a nice big tax write-off and then at some point they get to make an appearance on the stage with a nice applause, some cameras flashing, and then they can walk home with a nice shiny trophy. ESPN would have been better of asking Harry to come on the stage, maybe co-host with Serena Williams. Harry could have been the one with his connections and his capacity of being the so-called founder of the Invictus Games. It would have been positive coverage from him to stand on stage and to give the award for someone that is actually deserving of it. But no, they've decided that Harry is the one that's apparently deserving of this award. And they've also rejigged it from the initial poster saying it's Prince Harry that's getting the award because of the backlash and the fact that there's a petition. Pat Tillman's mother has spoken out. Some other celebrities have spoken out against it as well. They've put out a statement, naturally very defiant. Whilst we understand not everybody will agree with all our honorees selected, the Invictus Games Foundation does incredible work and ESPN believes this is a cause worth celebrating. Oh, so it's for the Invictus Games. Well, that makes so much more sense. Why didn't they say that in the beginning? Why did they make it out that Harry is the one getting the award for creating the Invictus Games in a personal capacity? Some have questioned the fact that, well, if it's for the Invictus Games that was made you know, in the UK, why on earth have they not given the same accolade to perhaps the Warrior Games that the Invictus Games was based on, which is actually an American organisation run by the Department of Defence, which was created in 2010. So, of course, we hear the usual cries. Harry is deserving of the award. He's the one that created the Invictus Games. Oh, how many times have we got to go through this? Harry did not create the Invictus Games. Harry was not the sole founder. Harry was coming to the end of his army career. The reason he had to leave the army is because he could not academically go up any higher rank than what he already was. They needed to give him something positive to focus on and something for the public to associate with Harry other than him fighting, drinking, getting naked and just generally causing chaos. He was behaving like a playboy. They needed something good that the public could look at Harry and associate with. So Harry went over and saw the 2013 Warrior Games and then it got put into motion that the UK Ministry of Defence with Sir Keith Mills who organised the Olympics and various palace staff and even Harry's very own secretary, Edward Lane Fox, came together and the foundation of Prince William, Prince Harry and the Duchess of Cambridge all created the Invictus Games. But I do not think for one second that Harry was the brainchild behind any of this. Speaking to the, the relevant people from the uh, Royal Foundation, um, insisted that I try to get myself there for 2013, which, as you know, uh, we made it. Why bring it to the UK? Well, it was such a, good, such a great concept by the Americans that it had to be stolen. Quite, sim quite simple as that, really. But as for the Invictus Games, and Harry is apparently receiving this award for the Invictus Games, right? 
Let's talk about the Invictus Games. Let's talk about the fact that since he met Megan, the Invictus Games was going to have a multi-million pound huge fundraiser that was going to be done by Amazon. Harry and Megan signed with Netflix. The fundraiser got cancelled. Harry and Megan's legal team threatened to sue anyone saying such a thing. And they said it was actually due to COVID restrictions, pandemic restrictions. Well, if that was true, then why, the moment the restrictions were lifted, did they not continue and then actually make that fundraiser happen? Second thing, Harry with Heart of the Invictus. Heart of the Invictus was all to do with the Invictus Games and the veterans. Harry and Meghan were part of a multi-million pound Netflix deal. They got paid for doing that. And the Invictus Games Foundation was apparently suitably compensated, an undisclosed figure, but I'm pretty sure it's got nothing in comparison to the millions that Harry and Meghan were being paid themselves. So then we get on to the next cries that we're hearing across the internet in defence of ESPN's decision. Harry's a veteran. He served two tours in Afghanistan. Yes, no one is denying that. He managed 10 years and during that time, in his own words, he'd sneak out of training on royal business when it suited him. He was allowed to leave the premises when they had routine drugs test. Harry spoke about how he used military equipment to want to kill his father. He actually, according to Harry's very own words here, again, as I said, spare does enough get that boy into trouble. He used military aircraft to fly over his father's car and at the last second, he changed his mind. This is a grown man and decided not to blow up his father, the now king of the UK and Commonwealth. These weren't his intrusive thoughts. This is what he said he actually did. Harry did 10 weeks in total deployments in Afghanistan, where most people, each tour is roughly about six months. Harry was protected every single day by an elite team. He was protected by the SAS. He had a team of Gurkhas around him. When there was an attack at Camp Bastion, Harry was literally picked up and carted off to the safety of England. Why do you think that Harry's clothes, whenever he did a photo shoot, he's in the desert and his boots always looked so remarkably clean when he was walking around holding his gun, apparently doing a bit of recon? Harry lied about being a fully qualified pilot. We know this because he failed his pilot's test three times, so they eventually shooed him into the gunner position, the co-pilot. Harry was never allowed to take up an Apache helicopter by himself because he doesn't have the qualifications. So the fact that Harry collected the last award, the Aviation Legends of Aviation Award, is completely laughable in itself. Harry didn't even have the right qualifications leaving school to get into officer training at Sandhurst. He was again pushed through because of who his family was, because of who his grandmother was. And look how he treated her in her final years. Harry was given very special treatment in comparison to others in the army. But he, of course, says, no, he was treated just like everybody else. Well, that's clearly not true. Let's talk about the fact that also in spare, Harry bragged about killing 25 members of the Taliban. And not only that, it's the way that he did it. The army said he betrayed their code of conduct. Harry had said that in the army, he was basically trained to see people not as humans. They were chess pieces. He was simply eliminating the bad guys. He described it like playing a game of Call of Duty. And my gut feeling is he probably was. Senior UK military figures have said he had betrayed them because he endangered soldiers by bragging about this. You just don't discuss your kill count by Harry making such public claims. The Taliban could have easily retaliated. Harry had no thought or concerns for the safety of others. What about this one? The big honorary roles that Harry was heartbroken and devastated when the Queen cruelly stripped him of them. You quit, you left, you literally left the royal family for a life of chasing money and celebrity. Of course, he wasn't going to be allowed to be keeping these prestigious honorary roles. But one in particular, this is a big one. He was made Captain General 
of the Royal Marines. This position had only previously been held by kings and then, of course, Prince Philip, who was the spouse of the monarch. Harry could not have had a more prestigious position bestowed on him. What did Harry do at a Royal Marines memorial service? He didn't go. He instead took Meghan to a Lion King premiere where he was captured embarrassingly on TV multiple times talking to Bob Iger, John Favreau, and he was begging for voiceover work for Meghan, which subsequently, as it would seem, it did actually work because then she got the voiceover work for Elephants, which got completely panned. And there are still rumours that the three million that Disney donated didn't quite make it to the Elephant Sanctuary. How's that for duty for you? You're meant to go and honour 11 servicemen, 11 Marines that lost their lives. You are the Captain General of the Royal Marines, but you instead take your wife to pimp her out to Disney. The USA, the UK, Canada, Australia, just to name a few, when it comes to our military, they stick by the same rules. They swear their oaths and the things that they all have in common is they always swear their allegiance to their head of state, whether it be the president or the king or the queen, that they show loyalty, respect, honour, integrity, duty and courage. Tell me which of those, honestly, Harry can put his name to. Courage? Oh, he tries to gaslight the world by saying Harry had the courage to leave the royal family. He didn't have the courage to leave. He quit like a coward, didn't even tell the royal family he was leaving. The royal family only got 10 minutes notice because they were told by the media Harry and Meghan were going to launch the assault on the media, not even telling the royals. They didn't escape anything that was a victim narrative that they set up to make the world feel oh sorry for them because they had behaved absolutely appallingly and they needed to cover up the fact that they just did one of the biggest smash and grabs and con jobs on the royal family that they have ever seen. When they appeared on Oprah, Harry and Meghan weren't just betraying his family, they were betraying the Queen, the head of the UK and the Commonwealth Armed Forces. Does this sound like a man deserving of the Pat Tillman Award? Most of the allegations, as we know, that they directed at the royal family turned out to be lies. Call it mistruths, call it their truth, call it what you want, but it turned out that most of it was fabricated. They had tried to damage not just his family, but also the relations between the Commonwealth countries with accusations of racism shown towards his wife and unborn child. Harry since dialed it back and said, me and Meg never said the royal family were racist. Oh, it didn't stop you collecting the Ripple of Hope Award, another award for fighting racism within the royal family. They might have changed the word in when that went to press closer to the time due to backlash, but that's what the award was initially given to them for. Harry has not shown loyalty to anyone. He walked away from duty. He clearly has no honour after all the attacks on his family of which two of them were his grandparents. Prince Philip was dying. He was in hospital when they did that horrific attack on Oprah. What he subjected his grandmother to as she was grieving for Prince Philip is truly heartbreaking and it angers many, many people still to this day. As for Harry having any sort of integrity left, there's me saying Harry should do the right thing. We know Harry's not going to do the right thing. We know he's going to swagger on stage and pat himself on the back for collecting this award. But Harry announced, or Meghan announced, apparently this award got announced smack bang just in time, again, like Harry's Scotty's Little Soldier's appearance, just when we're finding out that Harry has been hiding and deleting and wiping evidence in his own court case. Harry has proved time and time again that he does not possess any of those qualities and I'm not so sure anymore that he ever did. The only person that he is loyal to and has sworn his allegiance to is Meghan. 
there are so many people, veterans, ex-service men and women, people from all around the world that are writing in. You can read the comments under the petition on change.org what people are saying about Harry being given this award. One comment in particular really stands out for me. Pat Tillman abandoned the pursuit of personal wealth to embrace a life of service, where Harry abandoned a life of service to pursue personal wealth. I couldn't agree with that comment more. I've read up on Pat Tillman, obviously not being American, I read up on it and his story, honestly, it's so inspirational. And these awards were created in 2014 to go to the unsung heroes. Harry is anything but an unsung hero. Pat Tillman gave up his career and his personal life for duty, honour and to serve his country. Harry gave up duty, honour, loyalty to his family and to his country to serve himself. You could not have any two men in the world that are more different. I really do understand why Mary Tillman spoke out. I do understand why so many people are disgusted that this award is going to Harry. In my personal opinion, I think the right thing for Harry to do would be to turn down the award, especially because Pat Tillman's mother has expressed that she doesn't feel that he's deserving of it. I think that Harry should turn around and say, I think that it should go to someone more deserving. Perhaps Harry could even nominate someone, maybe you know a courageous story that he's read about, someone that is deserving of such an award that could do with the recognition. Or at the very least, seeing as it's supposed to be, for the Invictus Games apparently, why not get some of the veterans to come out and to collect the award instead if it is in fact for the Invictus Foundation. But as I've said many times, when has Harry been known to do the right thing of late? So guys, that's it for me on this video. I will be back with you very soon and I will see you in the comments. Take care for now. Bye.